Good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving and uh, have recovered from the food uh, overload and all of that. Um, it's good to be back. I'm glad to hear that the uh, craft show uh, seems to have gone well, and at least this year, no uh, big storms around that time. Um, I did. I don't know if there are any other announcements, but I did want to um, let everyone know that uh, we will be decorating for Advent um, after church today. It's kind of scary that we're already into Advent, but um, so if you'd like to stick around, we'll, we'll be doing that. Any other announcements? Yes, I have some further information about Craft Show. I finally have figures, and I think we did the best that we've ever done. We made approximately $5,000. Oh! Ooh. Awesome. Well, th thank you, Lori, for organizing and all the helpers. Any other announcements? Um, also, do please note the uh, notice about the food pantry donations um, and uh, check with Kathy if you have any questions. Otherwise, um, Jamie uh, will uh, lead us in the call to work. <laughs> Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Worship with gladness and singing. God is creator, sustainer, keeper, and shepherd. Bless God's name. Enjoy the presence of God. Give thanks and praise. God is sovereign and holy. Bless God's name. Know that God reigns, God's kingdom comes. God is healer, redeemer, restorer, and friend. Bless God's name. Let us join together in prayer. God who cares, we flourish in your compassion. You search for us and find us. You, Holy One, surround us with the power of your abundant love and utmost care. Be present among us as we praise your name, bring our burdens, and give thanks for all that you are and all that you do. Amen. Our first hymn is number um, 568. Uh, it, it's listed as 567, but um, I, I sent, er, sent the wrong numbers. Uh, number 568, Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, in a season when many people gather as families, we remember those who are away from their families and those who miss loved ones who have passed away. We pray also for all those who are sick. We pray that you would bring healing and comfort and help doctors find ways to assist when, when they don't yet know what's going on. We pray for Tony, for Monica, for Tracy, for Ed, for Mariah, for Travis and Sue, for Della, for John, for Sandy and Fred. We pray for all of those who are sick and pray that you would bring them comfort. We pray for their family members as well, that you would comfort and strengthen them in this time. We pray for the people near and far who live in fear of violence. We pray that you would help us make this a world of peace and justice and safety for all your children. We pray these things in Jesus' name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in the doxology, and then we will dedicate our offerings. The plates are by the door. Um, if you want, if you haven't yet, and you want to leave something, you can leave it on the way out. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts we have and for the blessing of sharing. Use our gifts for your glory and to meet the needs and hopes of your kingdom. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will, she will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture, there they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them with justice. Therefore thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted out all the weak animals with your horns and so you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Our psalm today is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. 
When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you do not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. So we are now through Thanksgiving. The stores have already been switching into Christmas decorations, and certainly the Christmas music is now on the radio. But what is Thanksgiving about? Is it about the turkey? According to some things I've read the last few days, uh, turkey and cranberry sauce is part of our standard Thanksgiving dinner, not because it's a long tradition going back to the pilgrims, but because of advertisers. Imagine that. Um, and there, there were some sample ads showing back you know, in the 1920s or something that um, uh, one of the uh, cranberry um, manufacturers or harvesters, whatever, um, was doing ads and saying, see, this is, this is what you need to have. Um, and even saw ads showing that you can take that canned cranberry um, sauce and slice it and use cookie cutters and make little shapes for the table. Very, very exciting, apparently. Um, or maybe it's about football. I know that uh, the results from this weekend for some of the games have not necessarily gone as some people wanted. Maybe other people are are happier, who knows. Um, I didn't actually get to watch any of the games. Um, is it about family stress? Um, everybody talks about getting together as families, but it sometimes also gets complicated. We could even ask if it's about the pilgrims, because certainly we talk about those first pilgrims, those, those colonists that have a connection to our own church, the United Church of Christ. But as sometimes happens with stories that get passed on, sometimes it's a little more complicated than that. Going back to the turkey, there's also the point that apparently Ben Franklin wanted the turkey to be the national symbol instead of the eagle. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how that would have worked, but that's a whole other story for another day. But Thanksgiving in its core, is something that is certainly biblical. The Bible talks about giving thanks to God as individuals, as people, as families. It's certainly important to, to thank and acknowledge what we have, to talk about what we're grateful for. At Canisius, the last couple years, our new president is always starting off his um, speeches in public it sounds a little corny sometimes, but I, I respect the, the sentiment. He says he likes to start with what he calls an attitude of gratitude and acknowledge the people that have um, helped with whatever particular event and whatever things are going on. It may sound simple, and yet having people acknowledge what we do. 
acknowledging the, the things people have done, the efforts they have made, acknowledging ultimately what God gives us is important. On the other hand, sometimes we oversimplify this. I remember when I took students to India and we visited one of the, uh, one of the very poor neighborhoods in the city and there, there, were, there was an organization, it, it, it's odd to think of slum tourism as a thing, you know, why, why should you go on a tour to study those things? But I felt it was important for my students to, to see it. And it certainly wasn't something that I felt right taking my students by myself and saying, let's go look how these people live. But the organizers do it to try to show both the ways that people struggle and also the many ways that they find creative ways they find to survive. But there were some moments during the tour when it almost sounded like the tour guides were saying, they don't have much, but look how happy they are. And it's true. In many places in the world and many times in history, people have found ways to survive and even find happiness in the middle of struggles. But at the same time, part of me wants to say, well, but is it, is it okay to just say, well, look how happy they are, as if that somehow says, well, if they had more, if they had better conditions, wouldn't that even be better? Certainly when we look around the world, certainly on my own travels, when I would go to India or some place else, see people living in poverty, and then I would come home and my kids would be asking for new toys and other things, there, there was certainly a disconnect there. And I had to stop for a minute and remind myself that they had not experienced that, and so they weren't, weren't seeing that the same way. But when people in many parts of the world live on a dollar a day, we do have much to be grateful for. We do have much to be aware of what we have that others don't. <coughs> in 1 Thessalonians, Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's not really as easy as it sounds. We live in a dangerous world. Many people have a lot to be afraid of these days. Certainly our economy still is uncertain. We face ongoing medical concerns with COVID and other things. I was at a conference in San Antonio last weekend and I have already seen on the Facebook group for the conference that people have been saying, well, better be careful because I just tested positive. Now, because I had COVID in September, I'm pretty sure that I'm safe from it for now. But every time people travel, they, they were saying on the radio this morning that this is going to be expected to be a record-breaking travel day. Um, every time people travel, there is risk. How do we find a way to give thanks even when we are afraid, even when we struggle, even when we see things going wrong? In Ezekiel, the writer brings us a vision of bringing the exiles home. This is the same writer who talks about the valley of dry bones brought back to life, a symbol of hope for people who had lost all hope. Ezekiel uses the image of a shepherd, something that shows up, of course, in the Psalms, something that shows up for Jesus, the idea of the shepherd, the one who will protect, care for, and as Jesus describes, how a sh the shepherd will even seek out the lost sheep. This is... I think, a very hopeful sign. Of course, it makes us the sheep, and sheep are not always very intelligent, easily, easily led astray, easily lost. So if we are the sheep, that is a reminder that we cannot survive without God. The psalm today talks about making a joyful noise. 
I know my father has said sometimes, and I've heard other people joke about this, that, you know, there are some people who say, oh, I can't sing. And I remind them, as my father would say, well, it does say make a joyful noise. So even if you feel you can't sing, we're still allowed to do that. But let's look again at those words. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Not just some people, not just those who are happy, not just those who have what they need, but everyone. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. The Lord is God. He made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Certainly there were times, there still are times in the history of God's people when there is fear, when there is trouble, when there is danger. And yet even in those times, God's people have held onto their faith. But then we come to this difficult message in the gospel. In Ezekiel, the writer says, that the shepherd will separate the sheep from the sheep, the fat sheep, the, the greedy ones that pushed aside the others. In the gospel, Jesus says that the shepherd is going to separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep are the ones who are righteous. The goats are the unrighteous. I'm not exactly sure where that distinction came from, because certainly in other places in the Bible, both sheep and goats are part of the flocks that God's people raised. But the bigger point is that when Jesus says the shepherd will separate, boy, what am I doing to myself? Shepherd, separate, too many S and SH sounds in there. Um, When the shepherd will separate the sheep from the goats, it's not righteousness in terms of morality and all the kinds of ways that people distinguish what's right and wrong. It's righteousness in terms of caring for God's people. And Jesus lists it specifically. Feeding the hungry. Giving something to drink to the thirsty. Welcoming strangers. Clothing the naked. Caring for the sick. Visiting those in prison. And for good reason, the righteous say to Jesus, well, we've never seen you in those situations, and yet you you say we did it. When did this happen? And Jesus says, when you cared for those in need, you cared for me. And yet, on the flip side, he says to the unrighteous, who equally are right, they didn't see Jesus in those situations, And yet he says, you didn't care for those in need. Now, it's easy to say, well, we should care for our family first. We should care for ourselves first. And there's reason to understand that. But Jesus is reminding us that we have an obligation to care for everyone. And that when we allow systems to exist and continue, that exclude those in need. We are not fully welcoming the kingdom. This is a challenging word. And I know many in this congregation and many in this community do so many things, have done so many things over the years, and we still collect the food for the food pantry. And that's that's a wonderful place to start. But it's always important, I think, to continue to reflect on how we can serve our community, how we can empower people, how we can care for all those in need. It's not easy. It's challenging, and certainly caring for, as I said earlier, families can be complicated. Caring for our families can be challenging, And yet even caring for those others around us may also be challenging, but I want to share a poem that discusses this challenge. Supposedly, Mother Teresa had this on the wall of the children's home in Calcutta. Um, At one point, it was 
was circulated as an uh, author unknown. Apparently, it was written by someone named Kent Keith. People are often unreasonable, unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. When you, what you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. Amen. Our closing hymn, um, we're actually changing, so it will be number 566. Let me just make sure I'm getting the title right. We gather together. As you go, may you recognize God in the stranger. May you extend hospitality and care to your neighbor. And may you trust in the reign of God forever. Amen. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. And if you want, stick around and help with the decorations.